Good evening. Praise the Lord. We're so glad to be back with you again here today. Amen. Looking forward to the Word of God. I'm so excited about the power of God and how He is moving today, fulfilling His Word and declaring as He has from the end to the beginning all things that would take place in this world and the things that we are beholding in our life around us today. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we begin our study tonight. Father, we love and thank you, Lord, for the mighty power of your presence, the working of your word in our lives today. God, we ask you to guide us, God, and declare into our hearts, Lord, the authority and power of your word. Lord, that we our faith might come to life today, God, that we may be inspired on the inward man, oh God, to become home. And be one, God, that believes you for all that you said you would do. We believe you today, God. Receive and open our hearts to you. Guide us by your wisdom, Father. We love you, Jesus. We honor you. Give you all glory. Give you all honor, Lord. You are worthy. Blessed is your holy name, O Father. Hallelujah to God in the highest. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to say I appreciate all of you that tune in and, and, and soak up what is offered in these videos. I thank you for being a part of this church and for letting God guide your life. Amen. As he has given us such great wisdom and provided for us in his word. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you and take a, take a look here at John chapter 5. We're looking at John 5 verses 24 through 29. And these are all in red letter edition. These are all red letters. Starting at verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. And here we go again, uh, uh, confirming the text we, we began with. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Praise God. Now Jesus is speaking of two points here in this text. One is that the dead will hear his voice and live. I don't believe he's only referring to the bodily resurrection. He's saying anyone that if we are, as, as, the, as the Bible teaches before we come to God, we are dead in trespasses and sins. But he said the dead will hear his voice. I thank God he let me hear his voice one day and delivered me from my own destruction. Hallelujah. So the dead will hear his voice not only physically but spiritually. The second point is that those that are in the graves will come forth. That yes, confirming there is a bodily resurrection. There is a resurrection to life and there's a resurrection to damnation. But we that have this blessed hope... And are intending to be among they that are uh, attending the resurrection of life have a great joy and a great uh, vision of that which is to come because there's a great inheritance waiting for the ones that put his tr their trust in him. Amen. The reason the dead, first of all, will hear the voice of the Son of God is because of who Jesus is. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Amen. He is the center of and source of the resurrection power. The reason that all that are in the grave shall come forth is because Jesus was the first fruits of the resurrection. Amen. As he said that he has given unto the Son to have life, and that he had given to, uh, authority to execute judgment because he's the Son of Man, because he became human and endured this life and the hardship of the cross and rose again on the third day, that now we will be eligible to be counted in that number. Praise God. But what is beautiful to me is how that God spiritually has resurrected us already in the born-again experience, brought to life our dead soul, 
trapped by trespasses and sin. Amen. But Jesus Christ has become the first fruits of the resurrection because he is the Lord. As Philippians 2, 7 through 11 says that he was being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And it goes on, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and of those of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. He is the resurrection. He is the reason for our blessed hope today. It is Christ in us that is our hope of glory. Praise God. And so the point being that it doesn't matter how dormant and dead a soul may be. It doesn't matter how destructive uh, a, a physical body had endured in the grave or even burnt to ashes, scattered across the scene. God is able to resurrect and make it new, and he has proven it to us in his word. And let's consider the words of the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 37 as he was a prophet to those in the exile of Babylon. And he, he said that the hand of the Lord was upon him and that God carried him by the Spirit and sent him down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. And he said that there were many very many in the open valley, and that they were very dry, dead, dry bones scattered in a pile across the open valley. And God said to him, he said, Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel answered, saying, Lord, thou knowest. And he told me, he said, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and you will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. So Ezekiel says, So I prophesied and I was, as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and flesh came up upon them, skin covered them above, and when there was, but there was no breath yet in them. And then God said to me, Ezekiel said, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So he said, I prophesied as he commanded, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. And he said to me, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. But he said, prophesy, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves. And cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of their graves. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that the Lord hath spoken and performed it, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So think about what he's saying here. And I do want to, to state, first of all, that this prophecy in its most complete fulfillment is the restoration of the nation of Israel back into the promised land. God brought it up from the dead. They were a people scattered. They were a people that appeared to have been destroyed. And God was able to resurrect this nation in these end times to fulfill his word. Amen. But oh, how he declared the power of the resurrection and the ability to restore something that was completely dead and dormant and dry and destroyed. Amen. And a lot of people continue to ask the same question today. Can these bones live? What about my bones? What about the pile of bones that is my situation? What about the mess that I got myself into and now it looks like everything is destroyed and everything is burnt up and there is no hope of any good thing coming out of it? Some believe their problems are too far gone. They think the bones are dry. There's no hope for a resurrection. 
for their situation. But as we see in his word, as many times, that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Hallelujah. And God dealt with me on that verse in Jeremiah 32, 26, where it says the word of the Lord came to him and said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I'm here to tell you today by the declaration of the word of God, there is nothing too hard for the God that we serve. If he can create us, breathe the breath of life into us, he can take up what remnants there may be and bring them back together again and make them live again. Hallelujah. Breathe breath into them again. Amen. And we were dead in trespasses and sin, and we were lost in this world without God. But God has caused us to come together again. God has recreated a hope through our repentance and calling upon his name and receiving this great salvation. But without the breath of God, the work is not complete. Without the breath of God, we truly don't come to life. And we know that breath is the power of the Holy Ghost in us. Amen. Praise God. But some believe we are in an age of enlightenment today, that they somehow are in no need of what God has to offer them, and things are just going to get better and better till we reach a, some type of socialist utopia. But wow, are they blinded from the truth. End-time prophecies are lined up exactly as the Scriptures said they would, and in the final days of man's rule here on earth. You know, just a quick view on those this subject world government is creeping its tentacles around every aspect of life across this globe people that you would least think would be affected in the depths of areas that are not technically really astute to how the world's working today they're still being impacted by these tentacles of world government when you have a world bank you have world or a trade organization World Health Organization, World Court, International Monetary Fund, and the United Nations, which was just a democracy of dictators, but is now devouring national sovereignty worldwide. I'm telling you, we are in world government today. It's all around us today. And here's an interesting article that was in the New York Times on July 20th of this year, entitled, Our Cash-Free Future is Getting Closer. And the, the, the descriptive uh, paragraph of the article said that pandemic is propelling a shift toward cash as society in ways that no other single event has. Experts say that it, that's not necessarily a good thing. Well, I agree with that determination. Amen. But we see where it's headed. Revelation 13 and 16 through 17 speaks of the Antichrist system that is coming on us. And it said that he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their forehead, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Amen. Once again, is there any hope for this world? Can these bones live? Hallelujah. The nations are saber-rattling. We are uh, appearing to be on the verge of a World War III today with nuclear weapons in the hands of maniacal dictators and fallout is almost inevitable. The elements, the Bible says, will melt with a fervent heat, very, very much describing the effects of a nuclear blast. Amen. And we know what's to come. The sixth angel of uh, the sixth trump in Revelation 9 says that he would sound and loose the four angels that are bound in the great river Euphrates, and four angels were, were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men, a third of mankind. Can these bones live? I'm telling you, yes. With faith in the God that made us, with faith in Jesus Christ, there will be a resurrection. There will be a restoration. There will be an opportunity for this world to continue in the blessings of God in the millennial age of the rule of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. But many are enduring personal crisis. You may be watching this video today wondering how things could get worse in your life. Are you wondering, can these bones live? Can anything good come out of my situation? 1 Corinthians 15, 19 says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. 
I'm here to tell you, your hope doesn't just lie with whether or not your present problems physically can be worked out. Hallelujah. We've got a blessed hope that will extend beyond this life, that no matter what takes place in this life, there's something greater awaiting the children of God, that we can trust and believe and rest in our God, that greater days are on their way. Hallelujah. No matter how this world seems to be. Romans 7 24 and 25 says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And then Paul answers the question. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah, we're in a body of sin and death. We're in a world that is lost. We're in a situation where things look like they're falling apart. But God is able to put bone to bone and restore, hallelujah, and make the bones live. Amen. It seems hopeless. It seems like there's no way out. Maybe it's time for you to really consider the God of the resurrection. If we really believe what we say and what his word has declared, what he testified and said he was, then we know that if he can raise the dead, he can deal with my situation and yours as well. Amen. He came on a mission. He came to supply the death, burial, and resurrection. He came to make a way where there was no way. came to save humanity when there was no other possible means by which we could be delivered from our own destruction. Hallelujah. Amen. He can make the dead hear his voice. Think about that. He makes the dead hear his voice. He made the storm hear his voice. He spoke to the wind and told it to come, and it obeyed his voice. Amen. He recognized the voice of the Creator and obeyed Him. Well, even the dead will hear the voice of Jesus Christ. I'm glad, so glad, that when I was dead in trespasses and sin, when I was lost and undone, when I was headed for destruction, hallelujah, I heard the voice of the God of glory calling my name, and the dead heard His voice. And these bones begin to live again. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And Isaiah, the great prophet, described what Jesus would endure when he came to pay that price, saying he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace that we would have had, the lack of that peace, the chastisement of him, it was put upon him, and with his stripes, that whip on his back, the prophet said, we are healed. Amen. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one its own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He paid the price that we owed to God. He paid what he didn't have to pay. He gave himself on Calvary. He suffered himself to be into the hands of sinners. Amen. But yet he also declared from the cross, it is finished. Amen. He accomplished what he came to do. He took the, de the keys of death, hell, and the grave from Satan. Amen. Then he entered back into that body on the third day and rose again. Amen. No doubt looked back at that empty tomb and said, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Hallelujah. He won the victory, not only for himself, but for all of us today. Amen. So the question continues, can these bones live? Was the body that was laying in the tomb after that dark, stormy Passover able to live? Oh, yes, it was. Jesus said in John 14, 19, because I live, you're, you shall live also. You're going to live as well. You're going to see the miraculous being reported and restored upon you. You're going to see the resurrection of the dead you're going to see bone come to bone, flesh arise, and the breath of God come into your life to restore what God said is ours. Amen. Don't tell me it's too far gone. Don't tell me it's hopeless. Is there anything too hard for God? The Bible says there's nothing that is too hard for our God. Amen. Praise God. Somebody watching has been dead too long. 
time to shake off the grave clothes and realize we're serving the God of the resurrection. We're serving the God that can raise the dead. It doesn't matter how many thousands of years have they laid in the tomb or laid in the ground or scattered across the ocean. God is able to restore. Praise God. But God's people have to have the faith to shake off the grave clothes. Amen. Matthew 22, 31, 32. Jesus said, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob? He goes on and says, God is not the God of the dead, but the living. Amen. They may have passed away of their natural life, praise God, but they're still alive. And he's still their God. Amen. And they are among the living in the kingdom of God today. Praise God. Amen. Some have been, no doubt, watching today. Have been in Pentecost a long time. But you never shook the grave clothes off. Never shook off the grave clothes. Strip yourself of the idea that you're still bound and struggling and trying to achieve, trying to breathe, trying to live. Hallelujah. But God says, I already made a way and provided you resurrection power to rise above those things. One day Abraham is going to sit up out of the grave, as my old preacher friend, Brother Brookshire, used to say, He's going to shake the dust off, clothes off, uh, off of his clothes. He's going to turn to Sarah and say, wake up, Sarah. The Redeemer's here. Amen. And they're going to stand up again. And their spirit will be rejoined to their body, that glorified state. Amen. Because he is the God of the living and not the God of the dead. He is the God of the resurrection that will apply that power in your life and my life as we believe him by faith today. Amen. He specializes in bringing beauty from ashes, he said. If you think about those, many times I get questions about cremation. And although personally I would think it would be better to leave it as in, the body as intact as, as we could, praise God. But even if they are brought to ashes... The Bible says that God can bring beauty out of ashes. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all that mourn. And listen to this, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil, the, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. He'll take the ashes, the remnants of the destruction all about you and of your own life. And he'll cause it to come forth with something beautiful. He'll take those grave clothes off of us and give us a garment of praise that will worship the Almighty in spirit and in truth. Delivered from the hindrance and bondage of the carnal nature. Amen. Because of the power of this great resurrection. John 11, 25, 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he turned to Martha there and says, Believest thou this? I wonder if he would turn to you and I today and say, Believest thou this? Do you believe what I'm telling you? When it comes to that destruction you, that's before your eyes today, will you believe that, that he said, Though you were dead, yet shall you live. Though it looks horrible, there's a miracle coming. Amen. Though everything looks destroyed, I'm able to raise it back up again. Do you believe this? Hallelujah. Romans 8, 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. He's going to quicken us. That is to bring us to life. 
That's what that reference means. And he says the mortal bodies. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will raise you up in newness of life today. Before we ever face the grave or the rapture, whatever comes first. Amen. God is able to quicken us by the Holy Ghost. He enlivens us. He lifts us above mere forms and fashions of religion. And he gives us a brand new life connected to the creator himself. Amen. Alive to live for God. Empowered by him. Because there is a spiritual resurrection. I like in the born again experience to a spiritual resurrection. That we are delivered from the body of sin and death. And given victory in this lifetime. But there is a bodily resurrection coming. As there was that Jesus himself experienced. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15. Some call the resurrection chapter. Starting at verse 51. He said, behold I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. Talking about people in the church. You're going to be changed into something glorious. It's coming, brothers and sisters. He said, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal will put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on Incorruption and the mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Think about this. Every destruction ever came nigh your dwelling came in your life. He said that death is going to be swallowed up in victory. He's going to overcome it all with one big gulp. The God of the resurrection swallowed up the uh, death. He destroyed death. He could, took control over death. He swallowed up hopelessness. He swallowed up defeat. He swallowed up all devastation. Nothing is too hard for our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 8, 9 says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He's saying we need to have that spirit. We need to have that spirit of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. And when we do, we are no longer merely in this flesh. We no longer abide by carnal ideas and rules. We are lifted up into the realm of the spirit to walk in resurrection power and newness of life. Hallelujah. You must have the Holy Ghost dwelling in you if you are to hear his voice and be raised from the dead. And unto eternal life, I want to hear his voice. I want to be in tune with his voice. I want to have the spirit that quickens, that quickeneth us. Amen. Alive in my soul so that I can hear the voice of God. And that's, that's been the theme throughout the word of God when it comes to those that come to him and are transformed by him. I, Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27 says, A new heart also will I give unto you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Hallelujah. How many know what it's like to have a stony heart? I used to have one. I know a lot of people that still have that today. They're bound and darkened and uh, living in, in, in struggling in tough times because sin has darkened the heart. Hallelujah. But he says, I'm going to give you a brand new heart. I'm going to put my spirit in you. And he said that the spirit will cause us to walk in his statutes. It's not trying to do good, trying to obey a list of rules. It's letting God's spirit take reign in our lives, transforming and empowering us. And putting in us the desire to serve him in all his ways. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Romans 6, 4 and 7 says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. 
Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Amen. Think about the power of the spirit of the resurrection living in us, helping us to be crucified of the old nature. Sin would be destroyed in our lives. We would stop serving sin and be free to live for God, that we shall live with him. There's life abundant in the power of the spirit. There's life abundant in the power of the resurrection. Amen. As I said, I believe we are already spiritually resurrected when we are born of the water and of the spirit. Praise God. Romans 6, 11, further on that same chapter to 14, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Consider ourselves, we should consider ourselves dead to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then he goes on, let not sin reign. Therefore, in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves to God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Hallelujah. But hear what he's saying here, that we are freed from the bondage of sin when we enter into this new life granted to us by the spirit of the resurrection. Amen. That we should determine not to allow ourselves to have uh, this opportunity to be used as an instrument of unrighteousness. But we should strive to be instruments of righteousness, that God will use us to work what it is his will by the power of the resurrection living in us. Amen. The resurrection causes us to have priorities that are completely arranged, rearranged. I would say altered, but really they're made better and they're made aright by the power of the spirit of the resurrection. And the resurrected have their priorities right. The resurrected enjoy living for God. They enjoy worshiping God. They enjoy serving. Amen. They enjoy living for him. It's not a burden. It's not an oppression to please God. As some would say, I think it was the book of Malachi, speaking of the sacrifices. Oh, what a weariness it is. Well, if it's a weariness, you're doing it wrong. You need the power of the resurrection living inside you that makes it a joy and a thrill and a great blessing to live for him, to worship him. Amen. The resurrected are happy. Blessed are you, he said. And he's saying that happy are you. We are happy because the power the resurrection lives inside of us through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Are you tired of grave clothes? Are you tired of wondering if these bones can live? Are you ready for abundant life? It's found in the power of the spirit of the resurrection, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Preparing us for the great day when this Mortal shall put on immortality, and we're going to be changed, and we're going to be made like him by the power of the resurrection. And these bones are going to live. Hallelujah. These bones are going to live for eternity, glorified in the nature that Jesus Christ was and is, to be like him and to inherit this great blessing he went to prepare for us because of the power of the resurrection. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for, for being with me on this video today. Amen. I hope that if you enjoyed it, you'll hit the like button to let me know. Amen. You can subscribe to the videos if you haven't done so yet uh, for Open Door Apostolic Church. We do, of course, every Sunday morning we have a link and we'll continue to do Wednesday nights. And there's also, you have to search uh, uh, Fearless Youth and uh, hyphen to see their videos, but they're right there on YouTube as well. God bless you all. Thanks so much for tuning in. Amen. And walk in that newness of life and let your bones live. Praise God. We love you. Hope to see you again soon. God bless you in Jesus' name.